I'm Julia Jessen. I'm a master's student in art history and museum studies here at Syracuse, and I curated the show Making History, Justifying Conquest, Depictions of Native Americans in American Book Company textbooks. This is one of the first images that you'll encounter in the show. This is Harry Fenn's Indian watching a ship from shore from about 1870. Fenn creates this kind of two-sided dichotomy in the image with the native figure on one side and the ship on the other. Fenn depicts a single solitary figure, seeming to imply that there is a sparsely populated new world, um, so that land is available for the taking. And on the other side, he includes this ship, which seems to indicate the European construct of civilization and progress. By putting these two together and strictly separating them, he seems to indicate that the native man belongs in a past pre-colonization world. My name is Joan Bryant. I'm Associate Professor of African American Studies at Syracuse. The photo I'm standing with is by a photographer named Herbert Gare. He was a photojournalist for Life magazine, which was the most popular pictorial magazine of its period. And the image is entitled Interracial Unity Conference After the Harlem Riot. The conference held at Hunter College after a riot, the second Harlem riot in the 1940s. And the image is striking, I think, for what it does not portray. You don't see the violence of the riot. You see a uh, very artistic tapered line of professionals with stacks of paper deliberating um, after this riot that left five people dead, 400 people wounded, 500 people arrested, and $5 million worth of damage. So it says something about the significance of photography um, as a tool of documentation and of artistry for what it does and doesn't show. So I'm Wayne Franitz and I'm the organizer of this exhibit, which uh, also involved the help of six uh, graduate students at the same time. My favorite uh, painting in this exhibition is this one. It's a very tiny panel painting by an artist named Dow, D-O-U, who is not well known today, but in his lifetime, he was a very wealthy and celebrated artist. And in the 18th and early 19th century, he was thought to be the greatest Dutch painter of the Golden Age, which is kind of interesting. It shows you how taste has changed. And what's really wonderful about this is the very, very minute way in which it is painted. You literally can come up close to it and you can't see a brush stroke anywhere. He popularized something that the Dutch call fine schilderij, which means fine painting. And in fact, if you look at her tankard, uh, you can see reflections of her red apron in it. It's really pretty wonderful.